Welcome everyone to the SCRL American Ethanol Series Season 2 Race 9 at Kansas Speedway, a 1.5 mile D-shaped oval that still has a freshly new surface and that's and that's one of the challenges these 42 drivers are going to have to face, especially since it is the daytime, the track is going to be slicker because it's just hotter. And so we could have more uh, slide ups than last night. And when we were here a season ago, it was under cloudy conditions, and under cloudy conditions, it's not as slick, and um, there's more grip on, on the racetrack. Not as much as when, when we are in the sunlight. So, so some of the notes for veterans that they took a season ago may not be uh, very helpful at all. And also last season, there was two cautions, and one of them happened very early, and I think that first caution took out about half of the field on the tri-oval, and then the second caution came out when it was, I believe, a battle for second place when, when home we were on between, I think it was Sean Harpo and Jim Kelly. And I think that we could see the same thing today, maybe more cautions, maybe, maybe less cautions. I really do not know, and last week w when we were Ricky, there were some things that stayed the same and some things that changed. But one thing that changed, that's, that stayed the same, and that was pretty much the only thing that's, that stayed the same, was the continued dominance of Dale Scott and Dean Orton. These two drivers for the past three weeks have really gotten great, solid finishes. And but the thing is, Dean Orton was able to chop into that lead, uh, lead between him and Dale Scott. So now it's a 26 point difference and between Deet Orton and Jonas Maps Jr. who is the third place man in points, it is a 20 point lead. So a season ago, it felt like that everyone in points was pretty close together. Not as much this season. So, and it won't be too long before I we start saying, your time is running out if you're high in points. It won't be too long before we start saying that. So, if you're struggling, if you're struggling, or if you're in the middle of the pack, you really have to get going, because this race could be one of your last ch uh, chances to uh, catch up. Even though that might not be, not be easy for some of you to, to understand, it is uh, kind of the truth. But anyway, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. Oh, oh yeah, and also a season ago that race was won by AJ Green, but he's not in this series. So just like in the truck series, we are definitely going to have a new winner. Here is the starting lineup. So, our top 10 are Ryan Casey, his first career pole, Andrew Gorman, who in the past few weeks has gotten some really good qualifying uh, positions. Jonas Maps Jr., Tony Deer, Phil Goldberg, Jim Kelly, Lisa Gonzalez, Matt Hoshkiss, Hurley Haywood, and Dale Scott. That rounds out the top 10. Dale Scott, the points leader, Hurley, Hay Hurley Haywood, and the number 2 car. That number 2 car was driven in by AJ Green, who won last season in pretty dominating fashion, and here is the rest of the field. Dean Orton starts in the middle of the pack, 27, so he's going to have to really find his way through here. I just want to go through the field to see if anyone has trouble, because last night in the truck series, Daniel Boyles in the sixth truck uh, had to come down pit road early, but that doesn't seem like the case this season. So now coming out of turn number four, and on to the front stretch, Ryan Casey leads him to the green flag at Kansas for the second event ever in the series. And Ryan Casey get, gets off to a pretty good start, like Bro Ketchog did last night. But here comes Jonas Maps Jr. looking to make the pass. Right behind him is Philip Goldberg in the 18, a driver that had a really good day at, at Hillside before he had an engine failure. And, and he was leading while that happened. And Philip Goldberg here. It almost looked like it, that he was going to take the lead away, but oh my goodness, here. They hook together here. Ryan Casey goes over the wall. Oh my goodness, over the wall here. Oh my goodness. Dale Scott gets some damage right here. Oh my goodness. Early crash in, in the going, and strangely, that did not take out as many cars as we thought we would. Oh my goodness, what happened right there? That's not gonna be. I don't think Ryan Casey is gonna be very happy with how uh, Phil Goldberg in the 18 w was racing him. He he's not because that was just simply way too early to just be forcing the issue. But. 
just like a season ago, a very early caution. Let's take a closer look and see what happened with him and then how some of the other drivers got involved. Entering turn number three, Ryan Casey did leave some room from, from Philip Goldberg, but the thing is, it was not enough room for Philip Goldberg to make a pass. And I feel like that this shouldn't come across as Philip Goldberg was just trying to get him like loose because... It's just simply, it's just way too early to do that. It just is right here. And for Ryan Casey, he gets the worst end of it. So he gets clipped down onto the apron right here. Philip Goldberg saves the car. Joe Smith Jr. does an amazing job right here to get slowed down on time right here. And then right here, this is the rest of the crash starts right here. Hurley uh, Haywood goes around. Torn Dieter goes around. Uh, ben Goldberg got some damage. So did Blaine Keys. And many more drivers also got some nose damage. And some of that nose damage might actually result in a couple of DNFs. But if we were. But when we look at, when we look at, oh my guess, when we look at Club Crafter right here, what happened to him right here is that I think that, that we all of a sudden saw saw Club Crafter just like sideways coming onto our screen. And what happened right here is that you can see right here, I think Hurley Haywood was slowing down and Dale Scott in the 15 uh, didn't check up in time right here. Because then what happened right here is that they hooked together here. And Club Crafton was already too slow anyway. So that's what caused it there. He gets into Jim Kelly. Then to Hurley Haywood. And Hurley Haywood's going to probably have some really heavy right, right front damage right here. But look at everyone here. Look at everyone that could have gotten a lot more worse damage right here. And right there, I actually did not notice like uh, Blank Keys running into the back of Dale Scott. So it looks like Dale Scott might actually have more damage than what we thought we had. Uh, than what I thought he had. But anyway, now let's go onboard some drivers from a spectator close to turn number four. Only three DNFs, Ryan Casey, Torn Dieter, Garrett Sinner. Garrett Sinner has had a, a mediocre season uh, Torn Deer came into space 10 in points. Ryan Casey, like Garrett Center, has also had a mediocre uh, season, so all three will take pretty big hits right here. And Ryan Casey, oh my god. His DNF right here is just going to leave a bad taste in my mouth. It's just going to leave a bad taste in my, in my mouth for the rest of the race, just because of his good qualifying, just because of his good qualifying position. But anyway, as we now go back to the green flag right here, Phil Gober will lead us back to the green flag. I still don't really know how to feel about that just highly intentional move that he just did. And, and, and it looks like that we could be in for we could be in for another crash very soon right here because already they are starting to fan out too wide and then it should not be too long before we see three wide racing. But, but anyway here, now it looks like the course once again. Oh my god. What what are we doing right here? Oh my goodness, Peyton Keys, Lisa Gonzalez are here, they hooked once again. I don't know what they are doing racing aggressive so earlier here in Kansas. This, this, this is kind of getting a little, a little ridiculous, if you ask me. But now Payne Keys are here. Maybe that was what Phil, what Phil Goldberg was trying to do, maybe. But even if, if that was what he was trying to, to do, it was still... It still was not a smart move here. And now, as you can see, because of that, Phil Goldberg has now... Uh, now has a huge lead here. As now, all of a sudden, Randy O'Neill and Evan DePaula will now join... Uh, will now come up to the front to maybe see if they can uh, challenge him. Right behind these two on the inside is Jonas Maps Jr., Brody Kajog in the number 8. He was the pole center last night in the truck series, and it looked like that he did show some speed in the first couple laps, but then just fell off. But anyway, we're here. We actually need watches here. Brody Kajog in number 8. What are we doing? Okay, it looks like everything's going to be fine right here. But as you can see, Phil Goldberg, he has just gone out through here to a massive clear here. What's the margin this time? The margin is... Okay, it's not a huge lead, especially for this early in the race. But anyway, now Jonas Pest Jr. has gone to the high side here, and now all of a sudden we're, we're starting to see Cameron Gollins. Cameron Gollins so far this season has really... It, it's just that it feels like nothing ha has happened for him except like crashes, it feels like when I look at uh, where he is in points because he is not even inside the top 25 so he just I just think that he, he just wants to get a good finish but, but anyway it looks like now Evan DePaula are here it looks like that he is now starting to reel in Philip Goldberg Evan DePaula has really not had that great of a season in fact I think he's possibly 
maybe like last in points or close to last in, or close to last in points. So he just really wants to just get a good finisher here because he really has not really had anywhere remotely close to a, a good finish based on his points position. Blank he's in 88. He did get some damage in the last crash, but I guess it wasn't enough to uh, uh, affect his car. But now it looks like. A, but now it looks like you have no caution, and yes, we do. Arch Hassan in the 28 has heavy damage. Oh, Dale Scott. Uh, oh, yeah, it looks like his, his massive points lead might come to an end. Uh, Kendall Baynor, Connor Breeden. Is there anyone on, on Perp Road? Nope, it doesn't look like it. Nope, it doesn't look like it. So it looks like that this was probably maybe like a five to six car pileup coming out of turn number four. And maybe. And maybe. The exact same thing happened that caused the last crash in a hook in turn number four going horribly wrong. Well, let's take a look for. Well, well let's take a look so that way we know for sure. My, my prediction of what happened did sort of come true. It wasn't a hooking on the inside. It was actually a hooking on the outside that caused it. And the hooking was between Austin Candy and Kendall Minor, the, the two drivers on the high side here. Then they come right down into Arch Hassan right here. Kendall Minor hits the wall, but, but Arch Hassan looks to, to get to get the worst right here. Abe Troxel gets into. Uh, They've crafted it in the 62. Connor Breeden has nowhere to go. Uh, Hurley Haywood and Ben Goldberg might have received some slight damage as well, but Jim Kelly did a nice job to get through the middle of it. And then Club Crafton and, D and Dale Scott, they were already so far behind, so Dale Scott was not involved in this crash. But anyway, uh, unlike last time, this time we will definitely show some onboard cameras. Arch Hossang did not get that great of a restart once they went back r racing, and that caused him to uh, not pass that many cars and, and look like that he was finally going to do that, but yet trouble once again for the 28 machine. <laughs> I feel like just like what happened the last caution or just before the first caution happened uh, with Philip Goldberg and Ryan Casey, Kendall Maynor and Austin Carey here, I think Kendall Maynor, I think, was maybe uh, pushing the limit just a little bit. It looked like everything was going to be fine until he got turned by the Crafton. Now we add Connor Breeden and Arsh Hussain to the drivers that are that, are, that will now be out of the race. And now our leader is still Philip Goldberg in the 18, who I said earlier has had some good runs before, so, such as Hillside, where I believe actually in that race he led the most laps or came close to leading the most laps, but then an engine failure resulted in that. And, and, and for those who watched the, the truck race, Garrett Sinner entering that race was in a very similar position where he was so good for some of the races and then he finally got the win. Could could the same thing happen to Philip Goldberg? I'm not exactly quite sure because uh, the, the uh, because right behind him, the orange car of Randy O'Neill, uh, who also ha has shown uh, quite a bit of speed every now and then, 11 points, is also looking for that first career win of his career. His first, first career win of his career, what? And right behind him, Payne Keys, another driver that has also shown quite a bit of speed, and looks like that once again the caution's out. Was it for? Ooh, Payne, Payne, Payne Keys, Ben Goldberg are here, the two drivers that seem to have taken the heaviest hits. Hmm, I wonder what happened here. Let's take a look. Two things. Number one, I was not aware that Blaine Keys was inside the top ten, so he was having a good day just before, just before this happened. And second, I thought it was just Blaine Keys and Ben Goldberg. It was not. So, just like all the previous two cautions, a hook in right here, Matt Hoskins does a great job to save the car, but Blank Hughes, Blank Hughes goes around. And right in front of the pack right here, the first driver to hit him right here is Aiden Saunders. Aiden Saunders goes right in front of Charles Bellion, and then Charles Bellion gets heavy damage. Ben Braley gets an injury here, but then the worst here comes from Ben Goldberg. Look at that right here. It, it causes him to go upside down. Kendall Maynor in the 70 might have received some minor damage. But for the most part, that could have been another huge crash. But for Blank Hughes... Ben Goldberg, Ian Saunders, Ben Brilliant, Charles Belding, their days are, 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 are going to result in the finishes that I don't think they want to get. But now, let's go on board a driver, or two. I actually did not realize that Dean Orton came super close to hitting the front of Blaine Keys, and this could be the move that actually gives, that helps him get the points lead, unless something happens to him by the time this race is over. <laughs> Let's
let's use the chase camera to follow Blaine Keys through his wild ride. <laughs> Aiden Saunders, Ben Goldberg, and Blaine Keys are officially out of the race, so we've had three crashes so far, and each of them have resulted in three DNFs, two DNFs, and three DNFs, so, uh, and some of these crashes, I think, should have maybe had actually been a lot more bigger than what they ended up being, but I feel like that when we go back racing, it'll still be seven more laps to go, so we still have quite a bit of racing left to go, and a, and a lot can still happen, but one thing that hasn't really changed too much is the domination of Phil Goldberg today at Kansas. And now the, now the, the green flag is back out here at, at Kansas. And Randy O'Neill, it looked like that maybe he was trying to do a crossover, but it didn't work out. And now uh, Payne Keys is actually going to go. Both uh, Payne Keys and Ed DePaula are going to be huge losers here after this. This restart. Jonas Paps Jr. in the night seven. He's he's searching for his first crew win. Third in points entering this race. Uh, mathematically, he, mathematically, there even if he were to, to win this race, he would still not be our points leader. Uh, just because entering this race, he is more than a full race behind Dale Scott. Uh, but but nevertheless, th this is still going to be a great day for him if he can hang on and not have anything bad happen to him. Uh, and right behind him, uh, we, we also have a, have a couple of our drivers, like I said earlier about how, how Cameron Gallant has not had that great of a season. Uh, Randy O'Neill, 11 points. This would definitely be a, be a huge win for him in the points. Philip Goldberg in the 18. Uh, he's actually not inside the top 25 points right now, so this would be a, a good day for him. And we have now stayed green uh, uh, for a, a couple laps now, but I, but I don't think it'll stay like that for much longer. Here, what was Dean Orient and John Martin here? That, that's getting a little too close. Sometimes I did wish that this track had maybe better camera and angles, but but hey, it's what I, it's what I have to deal with now. But but now Philip Goldberg here, it looks like he's just saying see how we're here, and now all of a sudden we're starting to see a lot more single power racing towards the end of the racing here, except with except this three about here between just Talabas, John Martin, and Payne Keys. Yeah, ever since. Ever since the restart, Payne Keys has really fallen off from here. And I'm like, I here. There are some drivers that are, are just getting super close to the back end of Dean Orton here. Uh, it, it, it fears that he's going to get turned around. But now, just top here, he, he gets he gets kicked to the high side. And now, Evan DePaula is going to take third away from Jonas Maps Jr. And Randy O'Neill still in second place. But our leader is still Philip Goldberg. Uh, l let's actually go, go on board the rear chase of. Interesting. The fastest lap right there was actually by John Martin in the one, and, 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 he, and he has actually been uh, moving up just a little bit here. Ben Braley in the 40, who I believe got damaged in the last in the last crash here. Where is he? Wow, for, for a driver that that is off the pace, I'm surprised that that he's actually the second fastest car. But, but, but hey, the SCRL is always always seems, always seems to be full of surprises here. And oh my guess Randy O'Neill in the 42. He actually got he actually got up against the wall right here, and now he's gonna lose second to Evan DePaula, but, but, but for Philip Goldberg, there's still nothing to worry about. And now we we are now hey going to the white flag right here, and it looks like the, Phil, Phil Goldberg is finally going to get the first crew win unless something really drastic happens to him. So anyway, white flag is now up in the air. Final lap, and it looks like Phil Goldberg is going to get his first crew win. And for some drivers like Evan Paula, they're going to get their best uh, their best career finish of the season. Here, John, John Martin. Hey, he he's been the fastest. He's been the, one of the fastest drivers. In fact, he's still the fastest driver here. Uh, if he had maybe uh, several more laps, he, he could be a, a contender here. But it's not going to be enough. Coming out of turn number four, 
Philip Goldberg in the 18 is going to capture the win at Kansas Speedway. I'm honestly surprised that we actually got the last several laps uh, in, in green flag after the uh, string of cautions that we had late in the race. But Philip Goldberg is going to be one of the biggest winners. Uh, and, 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 and I believe other drivers will too. Like, I think, like, let's just take a look right here. So, our top ten right here is Philip Goldberg, Evan DePaul, Randy O'Neill, Matt Hoshkiss, John Martin, Justin Galapas, Cameron Gallington, Jonas Maps Jr., Bro Kenshuk, and Anna Oils. I think, other than Philip Goldberg, the other big winner in this race uh, is uh, Jonas Maps Jr. He's not going to get the points lead, or I don't think even second, but he's, gonna, but he's definitely going to close in on the two man race between Dale Scott and Gene Orton. And I got to say, Dale. Dale Scott. If Dale Scott did not get, if Dale Scott did not get involved in the first crash, I think things would have been, I think things would have been a lot more different. And he's actually going to be one of the biggest losers. I don't know if he's going to lose the points lead. I think he had just a big enough margin of entry in the race that he's not going to lose it. Uh, and some ways, Dean Orton. I think Dean, Dean Orton. Uh, I think especially on the final restart, like A, he was not particularly that very great all day, but I think B, those restarts, I think he lost a couple to several positions on those restarts, so I think that's what also killed him. Other than Jonas Maps Jr., when I look at some of the top drivers and points, I think Matt Hoshkiss is going to be the other uh, big, big winner in the points because he comes into this race six in, six in points, yeah. so I think he's definitely going to gain positions on Cameron Blake and, and um, Andrew Gorman, who come, who came in this race fourth and fifth in points. So I think, yeah. So I think those are some of our uh, biggest winners and losers. But anyway, that is it. The, the race is now over, and I would like to thank everyone for watching this race. And and, and if you liked it, be sure to leave a like, uh, and be sure to also comment, especially if you're in the series. It's not required, but I, I would appreciate if you did, if you did. And that's pretty much it. And uh, hopefully you stay tuned on my channel later today when I upload the Hot Wheels Cup Series race. Or or it might actually be uploaded depending on when you're watching this. But anyway, I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Be sure to rate, comment, subscribe, and bye. Congrats to Philip Goldberg.